This is Share the Vision, presented by the Resource Center, a discussion of the programs and services of the Resource Center and about issues related to individuals with disabilities. Happy holidays, everybody. It is time for Toys for Tots. Joining me now is Steve Watterson, Community Relations Director at the Resource Center to start the show. Hello, Steve. Hi, Dennis. How are you? It's like a reunion, you know, a, a party here to get together with the Toys for Tots coordinators and put some energy and some emphasis into and behind the Toys for Tots collection drive this year. Yeah, I, I think as most of our listeners are aware, the Resource Center has coordinated the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve Toys for Tots Drive in Chautauqua County for 16, 17 years, a long time. And uh, we annually make the holidays brighter for uh, more than 2,400 children who need some assistance. And with the holiday shopping season kicking off this weekend, we wanted to do our kind of traditional Toys for Tots Drive kickoff radio show to let the community know what's going on this year and how they can support this effort. Well, this is the 17th year that we have kicked off Toys for Tots, and what we've come to know from a variety of locations and watching this grow and thrive through the years is it is intricate. There are a lot of hands that make it work at the busiest season of the year. So let us meet the hardworking people who help make this possible, beginning with Terry Johnson, who otherwise is the Director of Employment and Community-Based Services here at the Resource Center. Hello again, Terry. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Fine. It's great to be back with you. Listeners, I'm sure, are already aware of the kind of hollow sound of this room where we are. We haven't said where we're broadcasting from today until this moment, but now we can. Yes, we are at our Toy Central. This is the second year we've been at this location, and we are fortunate enough to be in the Allied Alarm Building on Allen Street in Falconer. This is right at the end of Allen Street, across from Weber Knapp, and this is, it must have turned out to be a good place last year because you're back this year. Absolutely. It was an ideal situation for us last year, and Mike Roberts and his team have been generous enough to let us use the space again this year. So we are very grateful for him and his entire team that are helping us not only with giving us the space, but some heavy lifts along the way. The other coordinator, Heather Brown, will be joining us in just a moment. But Terry, since we have done this before, and you have done this before, and you've asked the community many times before, we don't want to take anything for granted in terms of presenting the Toys for Tots message this year and just assuming that people are going to respond because we really need to touch their hearts, get us on their reminder list at this busy time of the year in order for you to be a success. Yes, and there's always a need, and I think not everybody sees the need on a day-to-day basis. I think Heather and I, in the positions that we're in, we talk to a lot of people on a regular basis and see a lot of things, and it really kind of drives us to continue to push this initiative forward. But we're very fortunate that our community is so giving and has been able to make this drive a success for us every year now for the 17 years that we've been doing this. And I think that there's a lot of need every year we're unsure of if we're going to make it and how what the application numbers are going to be because it all comes in right at the very end just before the holidays so we already have more applications at this point today than we did last year at this point that doesn't necessarily tell us if we're going to be over or not it might mean people are planning ahead we don't know but i have no reason to think that we will serve less than 2400 children this year it's very very possible that we will serve more than we have in the past and the way toys for tots works is it's not just one toy for 2400 children it's at least a couple Right, so every child gets a large toy and a stocking stuffer toy, sometimes a couple stocking stuffers. It just depends on the level of donations that we receive, what we can give. We do say this is not the entire Christmas. Sometimes it might just be the large toy, might be a basketball or a board game or something, but for those children that don't have those things, it really makes a world of difference to each and every child. How can people give toys to Toys for Tots this year? Well, we're just starting to get all of our boxes out this weekend. The rest of them should be out in all of the different sites. We have boxes out at over 80 businesses in the community. We have boxes at most TRC facilities. And then some locations are not generally ones that would receive toys. We have some new places this year taking money boxes where people can make a monetary donation in lieu of a toy at at those different businesses. And then we'll, in the last stretch, go out and, and spend that money locally to fill in some of the areas 
areas that we need. So there's a lot of different opportunities to give toys or to give financial contributions to help with this year's success. What is the timetable as we speak on this weekend right after Thanksgiving? Should people go and do this right now? Would that help you if they got all the toys in the boxes now? Or or, or what's the best for you? Well, for us, the sooner the better, because then we have a good idea as the applications come in. We'll be taking our applications for our walk-ins the very beginning of December, and so that's going to give us an idea of what supplemental toys we will need to purchase for areas that we are lacking. So if we have a couple hundred babies and we can look and see we only have toys for about 100, we know that that's where we need to spend our focus and our efforts on trying to get those toys for the younger kids or wherever our gaps are. Do you want to announce those uh, times right now for people to apply? Sure. We have uh, three application dates. One is in Dunkirk, and that's Thursday, December 1st at 186 Lakeshore Drive from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And then we have two dates in Jamestown, Friday, December 2nd from 1 until 4, and Saturday, December 3rd from 9 until noon. And we're going to be doing that at our resource center location at 200 Dunham Avenue. And what people need to bring with them is identification for themselves, the children they're signing up, and proof of household income. And the uh, people who donate toys can do that at any of those locations. We're talking about two separate things here. It's the signups that happen at specific locations. Um, How do you decide who can receive toys for TOTS? As part of our application process, we have to verify that they meet the federal poverty guidelines, and we have to verify that the children live in the home with them. And so that's why it's critical that people come to us prepared with all of the necessary documentation so that we can have them come in and apply and have it be a pretty quick in and out and smooth process for them to come and apply. I know you have a series of events, community events, people are committing to be a part of Terry Johnson, but I want to have you hold on that for a moment. Heather Brown is an assistant executive director at the Resource Center here in Chautauqua County, the other coordinator for Toys for Tots annually. Heather, I didn't want to wait any longer before I had an opportunity to welcome you to the show and to just have you comment on kicking off the 17th year of Toys for Tots. Great. Thank you so much for doing this again. We always look forward to kind of the unofficial kickoff when we do our first radio show. But we have optimism, but always a little hesitation at this time of the year. We don't know, as Terry said, what the application count is going to be. We haven't started unpacking, though we have started receiving some early donations. And we know it's always kind of a, a guessing game right up until that last weekend. So we're excited. We will get to this uh, at some point, unless you want to address it now. Can you anticipate specific needs, greater needs in particular categories of toys or age ranges or boys and girls, Heather? You know, typically we see some trends each year, and they're on either end of the margins, the real young or the older teenagers. And I think the main reason for that, not that the counts of people go up, but the toy selection in those two categories are a little more difficult. You know, if you have a a 7-year-old or an 8-year-old boy, a gift oftentimes can fit either or, but there's a big difference between a 6-month-old and a 1-year-old versus a 2- or a 3-year-old, and same when you get into those teenage years. So things that can be creative for the real young, Young, creative for the older teens because our campaign does go up to age 17. I was just thinking about this, you know, a, a, a toy that would be equally uh, as prized by an eight-year-old boy or girl. Turn that boy or girl to age 14. <laughs> Right, right. There's a lot of variation. So, and that's where the creativity, you know, board games are a wonderful thing for that older range. And they're also good with families with multiple children because it can involve many, many of the kids in the household. So creativity. And the challenge for both of you this year, every year, is to try and find a way to match the unknown demand at this point with the unknown quantity and selection of toys and make sure that it all works out all right. Absolutely. And I think that brings a little bit of the anxiety and the angst that we always get there somehow, but it's a little nerve wracking right now. We're like, what if this category goes way up and we've overplanned or vice versa? So we tell volunteers and we tell potential donors, go with something that touches your heart. If you have children in a certain age category and you're real familiar with something that's a real hot item or is a real hit, 
you know what, go with that donation, and we always find a good home and a good match for everything. And Terry also made reference to this cash contributions that can help you at the end. If you have money in hand and it comes right down to the final wire here, you will be able to uh, go to the store, perhaps, and get some things to fill in so no one is left without toys. Absolutely. Those cash donations that come in for the next few weeks, we wait for the last few days because we bag the toys and select them for the families the last few days. So there's been many times where we've done all of the bagging and then headed out for a shopping trip to make sure that we can fill in the gaps to do the next day's handout. Now, I'm going to get to you and... Uh, Terry, both on here to talk about the calendar because we got started on this, and I'm not sure that I ever allowed you to get to the end of it, uh, Terry or Heather, but when's the last time that people should consider donating toys? When do you need them all in here at Toy Central to begin this very uh, delicate process of matching what you have with what you need? Well, there's really never an end to collecting toys because we never say no. But our process is that we're going to start bagging on December 16th and 17th. So that weekend of the 16th and 17th, we're hoping for most of the boxes to come back in and get everything sorted for the volunteers because on December 17th, we'll have about a hundred over 100 people in here bagging up toys. So that's going to be critical that we have everything here that day. With that said, there's a lot of holiday parties that weekend and a lot of opportunities for us to get more toy collections after the 17th and so some of the people that have called me said we're going to have our party on the 17th is that going to be too late and the answer is no because we will always have some last minute requests that we will need to be filled and I laugh because we get toys donated 12 months out of the year anymore so some some of the things that are in our warehouse now space now are things that have come in through the course of the year because people have stumbled upon an opportunity and said, here, I've got these toys. Can you take them now? And it might be February or March. So we never say no, but really the 16th and 17th is our target date of December for everything to be in. And you are part of a number of events, community-wide events or smaller events, and this will not be an exhaustive list because some of those are still coming into you, but the things that you know about that will be connected to Toys for Tots where people can donate this year, where people can come and get together with others such as yourselves and pick up the spirit of this, uh, what are some of those events and happenings this year? We know at the mall, we're still working out the details, but as children go up to see Santa and have their pictures taken, they're going to do some promotion with us. So that will be starting the day after Thanksgiving and going through the weekend that we'll be bagging toys. And then at the Ice Arena in downtown Jamestown, the weekend of the 9th, 10th, and 11th of December, they're going to be offering free skate, open skate sessions, and it's going to be free if you bring a toy. And they'll be having music and a DJ, apparently, and different things that weekend. So that'll be really fun to be down there. Also, a big event happening at our facility on Dunham Avenue is on Saturday, December 3rd, and that is the Holiday Shopping Extravaganza. And a member of the team that works at the Resource Center has put together a really large craft and vendor fair. The last count I heard, there was over 40 vendors coming to sell their wares and goods. So you could come down there on December 3rd and get all of your Christmas shopping done. I know that might be a good tip for you, Dennis. You, you know me after all the years. I do, I do, so. Well, and I was just thinking about that, and is this the first ever such as this? You know, years ago we did it, and we did it on a much smaller scale, and, and Evelyn approached us this year and said she was really gung-ho to do it on a very, very large scale, and now that we have the large conference center, it's been gangbusters. Okay, so mark that down, everybody, that on the 3rd of December you can do a lot of Christmas shopping right at the Resource Center's administrative offices on Dunham Avenue outside Celeron from 930 to 4. 30 that day, and uh, it will be uh, a big Toys for Tots occasion as well. It will. It will. The vendors are all paying the fee to have their tables, and that goes 100% to Toys for Tots. There will also be food and chili for sale. They'll be having Chinese auctions. So it can be fun, and you can also get your Christmas shopping done, too. Now, what about the night before that, on Friday, December 2nd? Anything special happening that night? He asked. (laughs) That's a big night in downtown Jamestown. That is the annual holiday parade. And TRC is, again, the presenting sponsor. This year's theme is gift exchange. So everybody's been asked to decorate their floats as a gift exchange. And just 
even amongst our own team, we've had a lot of interesting interpretations of what that means. So stay tuned for some creative floats and entertainment. And that's always such just a nice career and Ives moment in downtown Jamestown. And people, this is just this coming Friday now, December 2nd, and the Saturday event a week from today that you were talking about. So it's all coming up very, very quickly here. And people can bring toys to the parade if they have not otherwise donated them to you. Absolutely. There's many, many people that march along the float. And we're usually right up at the beginning following the military members. And they can write up and give us a, a donation. Our subject today on Share the Vision is the Marine Corps Reserve's Toys for Tots 2016 campaign in Chautauqua County, being put forth by the Resource Center. We're speaking with the two coordinators of Toys for Tots, Heather Brown and Terry Johnson. Our program is coming to you from Allied Alarm at the end of Allen Street near South Dow in Falconer. Mike Roberts, the owner and president of Allied Alarm, will be joining us in just a few minutes. But now back to the questions for Heather and Terry. Terry Johnson, any other events that you know of on the calendar here, large or small, that you would like to get promoted to the community right now? You know, we have a lot of small area Christmas parties that Heather and I get invited to attend to pick up toy collections. One of them is a holiday party that Stell puts on. So one of us will be going to that to pick up. Everybody that attends that brings a toy. The Lakewood Rod and Gun Women's Auxiliary does the same thing. And then this year, and we did this last year as well, there's a couple of schools that have gotten really involved and really in the spirit of Toys for Tots and giving back to children and teaching that message of giving to children. Both Temple School in Kennedy and Bemis Point Elementary School have reached out to us for the second year in a row to encourage students to give back to those that are less fortunate. And in one of the instances, I've been asked to go speak to some of the classrooms about Toys for Tots and giving back to the kids. And last year when I did that at Bemis Point Elementary, I got a bunch of calls from parents the next day saying, my child wants to come this weekend and volunteer, but they didn't have any of the information or details. So this year when I go, I'm going to make sure I give everybody a little bit of information of how they can come and help if they want because I had a lot of parents calling me after I went to the classrooms and talked to their kids about giving back and and helping support Toys for Tots. And you bring me to one of the things I wanted to make sure we talked about at this juncture in the show, and that is volunteers. You both talked about uh, that aspect of this work a number of times. What do volunteers do for Toys for Tots? How can they sign up aside from uh, deluging you with phone calls, or maybe that's the right way to do (laughs) it? We have a lot of volunteer opportunities. One, we've already really accomplished what we needed, and that is people to adopt the barrels and the, or the boxes. You know, several years ago when we started this, they were big, heavy, round barrels that we have a few in here still left. We still say barrels, but they're really cardboard boxes now, which is a lot easier for us to transport. So I'm grateful that Toys for Tots switched their marketing <laughs> technique. The barrels roll, boxes don't. <laughs> yes, the barrels don't fit in the car so well. <laughs> boxes fold up. So we had a lot of volunteers step up and offer to adopt those boxes and be responsible for taking the boxes to those 80 businesses and locations, collecting the toys throughout the season. It's not just a one-time thing. Bringing the toys to us a couple of times a week during the season and bringing them back to us at the end. But then we're going to be needing help on December 17th to bag toys. We'll usually start about 8 o'clock in the morning and go until it's done. And that all depends on how many volunteers we have. We'll determine how long it takes. In the past, when it was about 50 volunteers, we were here till 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon bagging toys. The last couple of years, we've had so many that we might be done by noon. Um, and then we can start getting cleaned up and ready and prepared for the next day of distribution. So December 17th and 18th, And even the 19th, we can always use a little bit of help with that distribution process as well. How do people sign up? If they want to come on December 17th, they don't need to sign up. They can just show up here at Allied Alarm 2020 Allen Street Extension in Falconer. We don't need sign-ups because there's so many people. They can just come. If they're going to be coming to help with distribution or anything else, they can give Heather a call at 661-1042, and she can let them know what opportunities are available and what time slots are available. Anything else you want to say about events or uh, aspects of the calendar here before we move on to a few other things, Terry? I don't think so. I think we've covered quite a bit. This is, and the boxes all say this, Marine Corps Reserve Toys for Tots, so it's appropriate that that we spend a moment talking about the Marine Corps' uh, work in this area and how you fit into their program. Mm -hmm. 
We're actually what they consider a local community organization. There was no Marine Corps Reserve unit in Chautauqua County handling it. The closest one had been in the Buffalo Niagara area. So we had to apply to become official uh, local community organization. We have to follow all the rules, regulations, and Marine Corps Reserve guidelines. They handle all of the financial aspect and all of the accounting. We have to do weekly inventories. We have a manual, I don't know how many inches thick, of rules, regulations, standard operating procedures that they call it. So it's very tightly run. You know, the the charity gets very, very high ratings with uh, charitable scores because of that. So, and, and it allows people to know that what they are giving will go directly to you locally here. And yes. It'll be very helpful. Everything raised here stays local. The toys that are put in the collection boxes stay right here. The money stays local, and we spend that money locally too. Most appropriately, another guest has joined us that we can put on the air here right now. I'll have one of you coordinators do the introduction. Absolutely. So we already referenced him earlier in the show, and we were talking about our space and how fortunate we are to have him and his team on board helping us again this year. But Mike Roberts from Allied Alarm is here to kind of talk about why he is so willing to help us each year. Mike Roberts, hello. Let me shake your hand here. I wish you the best for this uh, emerging holiday time, and uh, thank you uh, publicly for, once again, donating this beautiful space for Toy Central. Well, couldn't be more happy to be part of uh, this this ministry and, and what uh, Heather and Terry and the Resource Center put into this. is it, It's overwhelming, and to see the number of people that they interacted with last year was just absolutely overwhelming to me. And you had a good time with the, the toys <laughs> no. and the people no. and everything. I, I had a great the time. The coordinators are chuckling. I don't know what I, I, I had a great time. I had an experience that really brought home what this mission is all about. And it was a, a young lady who had been going through a tough time. She had just moved back to the area. She did not have a Christmas for her children. I think it was December 22nd. And I had greeted her in the parking lot, and she says, is it too late? And I put her in contact with these more than capable people, and uh, it it was just you could see that they were used to it. I certainly wasn't. So as I explained to them later, it was the best part of my Christmas last year, being part of this organization. Wow. That's a very high commendation for what they do here. Well, you know, it's about a community that gives back. It's about people that volunteer. It's what makes our community the community that it is. I'm celebrating 30 years in Jamestown this week. Wow. Congratulations. I I, I moved here 30 years ago, and there's just it's been such an amazing place to raise a family. And uh, when you look at all of the resources that this community has, whether it's some of our generous foundations, whether it's an organization like Resource Center or one of my favorites, United Way, Uh Um, (laughs) you're overwhelmed by people's willingness to give back, to give to others, to do for others, and it's what uh, makes this the great community that it is. Those are just extraordinary words, uh, Mike, and uh, they really help pick up even more the spirit of this broadcast today and energize us in the room and hopefully the community, the people listening, to engage in Toys for Tots one more time. Well, you know, when you you come up and you see this entire room filled with with toys that people have donated, and maybe somebody out there thinks, ah, you know, I picked up one toy and I just threw it in one of the many uh, places that they can donate, and they don't think that it really mattered much, I would disagree with you you know many hands make for light work and i think terry and heather would say without those donations coming in they can't fulfill the next port to see some of the uh, faces on the people who come up and uh, work the other side of it they have a list it's a 10 year old boy they're going through they're filling that that wish list of this 10 year old boy you know whether you donate an hour whether you donate a toy every one of those makes a difference. Well, Mike, thank you very much. And I will say this, uh, pardon my pun here, but if there aren't enough toys right at the end, alarm bells will sound. That's exactly (laughs) right. Alarm bells will. (laughs) So, uh, Heather, Terry, a little more about the, you know, pick up the story here, the woman who found you on the 22nd. You know, 
Mike came in from the parking lot. I, I think he got more than he bargained for when he went out to shovel for us. It was the first day that we had had snow for the whole season. We had made it through the whole season without a lot of unfortunate weather. People love snow around this time of the year, and Heather and I always say, just get us past toy distribution day. <laughs> and we almost made it, and it snowed, and he was out there helping keep the parking lot clear for people that were coming in to pick up. And, you know, I think he probably got more than he bargained for that day, but I think it was really telling for him about why we do this and why we had reached out to him for some help last year to, to get us going with giving us some space. So she did come in. We were able to fulfill her. She had her children with her and a sister, and it was really a very, very sad story of her circumstances that brought her here that close to the holidays without anything. And so we were able to get her sister with her kids someplace else, and I took her kind of under my wings and calmed her down and got her what she needed, and we were able to instantly provide her with a bag of toys to leave that day so that she could enjoy Christmas with her children even given the unfortunate circumstances that she was facing in her life. And I think that kind of helps us realize that things happen to people. And, you know, you can't predict everything and you can't plan for every circumstance. And we see those every year. And we have our deadlines and we need applications by a certain date. But every year there's a house fire or somebody lost their job the week before Christmas or something something comes up and life happens. And I think part of what Heather and I are so accustomed to by working at the Resource Center and understanding life circumstances that can't be controlled. There's always those those circumstances, and so we're very happy to help any way that we can. Well, and uh, Heather, there's a kind of a flavor of the anticipated unexpected here. Absolutely. We plan for as much as we can, and then we plan for the unexpected. And that's some of the most meaningful, some of the most meaningful moments. It it is. You know, we all have one moment, probably every season, where there's just something that touches us for some reason that makes that connection that just kind of slows down the pace and makes you realize that you just made a difference in somebody's life. And we all have that each year, and and that kind of brings it home. Anything else, because the the time is uh, fleeting here, anything else we should say to our audience today about this program as it is about to get underway this year? Terry Johnson, Heather Brown. You know, I just thought of something. I had gotten a call just before we came to record the radio show today from a mother whose teacher had referred her child, and so she was overwhelmed because she didn't have anything, and again, circumstances had provided that she wasn't going to have much of a Christmas for her kids this year, so she called to find out how she could volunteer because she knows she can't provide a toy for her kids, and she knows that we're going to do that for her, and so she wanted the volunteer opportunities, and we've got her arranged up with the teacher to bring her here to volunteer, and so we arranged it all just today. So as we're kind of talking about the these stories that Mike referenced and, and that Heather and I see each year. It's this year, I, we don't expect to be any different, so we're happy to, to take any help that we can get. Uh, let us finish this program, at least you're a part of it, by uh, giving a phone number that people can call, again, to volunteer or to uh, get more information on this. Uh, what's the best way to reach you? So for the sake of giving out one number, we'll give out 661-1042. 661-1042. Too. Steve Watterson, another excellent kickoff to Toys for Tots this year. Oh, absolutely. It's very exciting. And this is one of the ways that the Resource Center is able to give back to the community for uh, all that the community does to support us throughout the year. And, um, you know, something like Toys for Tots, you really can see the difference that you're making in a family's life. And we're just looking forward to another fantastic Toys for Tots holiday season. Well, to you, Steve, to Heather Brown, Terry Johnson, and Mike Roberts, thank you all for sharing the vision today.